Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> my. <laughs> God. <laughs> Why do I have the intake manifold out of the car and the strange man standing next to me? That's because today's a very, very special day. I'm pretty sure I've been talking about individual throttle bodies for the past three years, and now we finally have the person that's actually gonna be able to make this happen. And who are you? So, uh, my name is Alex Nelson, and I design intakes and exhaust for a living. We are gonna be putting S85 V10 throttle bodies on this car. Obviously, half of V10 is five cylinders, and uh, we're gonna use a 3D scanner and very likely metal 3D printing to adapt them. And uh, in theory, it should make more than 151 horsepower. So does that mean that I could... Uh... Be my guest. Excellent work. <laughs> All right, so what's the actual game plan here? We're going to 3D scan the actual engine bay. So that'll mean that we can position the throttle bodies in CAD, um, we can make trumpets, we can do all sorts of cool stuff, we can mount the throttle uh, actuator and all that stuff. And that's what we're working on today. All right, well, let's get right to it. What's the uh, first thing we gotta do? The first thing we have to do is put a million stickers all over the engine bay. That's a lot of horsepower. Well, like, <laughs> <it's, laughs> I never thought about it like that. So we probably don't need the ITBs. That's true. But anyway. And we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I place these stickers on the car? What's the Yeah, so uh, the idea scanner here? is gonna shoot out a, basically a reference image. It looks like a QR code. Um, and it's about 16 inches by 16 inches. So imagine like if you were in this, if you're looking at this shock tower, imagine like a 16 by 16 square. There has to be at least three of these dots that I can see. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. And get stickered, I guess. All right, I'll start putting some stickers on. After applying what must have been a thousand horsepower worth of stickers, it was finally time to paint the engine bay? We'll be spray painting your engine bay. Uh, I promise we're not. This is a sublimating scanning spray. Uh, it'll flash off after like 12 hours. So we're just gonna paint this white with scanning spray and then that'll make it easier for the 3D scanner. All right, stickers are on, spray is on. It's time to turn the lights off and get scanning. Listen, if it makes 10 more horsepower and sounds good. Mission complete. Mission, mission complete. <laughs> yeah. I really need to make more power. It's about time it does. It is so crazy, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me fanboying, but it is crazy, like, working with, ordering so many parts from a supplier over such a long period of time, and just like, you know, it's a normal thing in my life, I guess, and then now finally working with you guys, it just kind of feels surreal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's super cool. Obviously, the A50 project, just bringing in the community. I know we featured yeah. your build on our yep. Instagram. If you, don't, if you guys don't know, Galavantory on Instagram. He's uh, swapping a E92 M3 into an M Coupe. And I mean, like the whole car, not just the <laughs> yeah, engine. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's true. It's just cool, like our customers, like coming here and helping us with our projects. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's awesome. It's really cool. So yeah, once I get this scanned in, uh, we'll have this added onto my scan that I have already. And then I can just take what I was already gonna do and uh, and add a snorkel. And so what you're saying is there's just gonna be like crazy induction noise coming right through the grill? Yeah, it'll be insane. I think that's it. That's all we need. With our 3D scanning session done, 
we sent Alex on his way with our 850 engine bay in his backpack and hopes and dreams of seeing Alex and some ITBs sometime in the future. So uh, once I get back to Minnesota, I'll start working on a prototype uh, and then I'll get that printed and shipped to you guys so you can test fit it. It'll probably be a set of prototypes because each runner will be an individual piece. And then once that checks out okay, maybe we'll go through another stage of testing with plastic prototypes. Then we'll do a metal printed prototype that'll be shipped straight to you guys and should be ready to go. Sweet. All right, well, thanks so much for coming down. Yeah, no problem. Should be sweet. Do you want the lav? Uh, we'll get it next time. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right, I'll see you guys. Yeah, no problem. Um, oh, these guys are really weird. These guys are super weird. Where the f am I going to get a ride to the airport? Don't worry, we gave Alex a ride to the airport and a cool limited edition 850 t shirt and a job. To get your APT Project t-shirt, scan the QR code or head to fcpro.com and just search the APT Project. Don't need a t-shirt? Pick up some parts for your next project. Now, back to the game. And we're back in Minnesota, that is. Today, tonight, what I'm going to be doing is probing in all of the uh, planes and bolt hole geometry of the head, the ITBs, and some fuel rail stuff as well as some throttle bracketry and accessory items. So this is just an extremely accurate way to make sure that we have the best outcome and it's as accurate as possible to keep stuff like this throttle linkage from binding and overall just to make the fit and finish really nice. This is a spare P2 head. It should be identical to the one that's on the car. So this should align really nicely to the scan we already did. Um, so without further ado, let's get scanning. You may notice that on top of the Star Trek laser scanner, I'm using a small ruby tip to pick up holes and flat surfaces. This tool is traditionally known as a CMM or a point probe, and it's what most design engineers use to pick up hard geometry and flat surfaces. The CMM tip is much more accurate than scanning, so adding these hard points to the scan will help me know exactly where the head is in the car and exactly how tight I can make each bolt hole. There were two main design approaches that I worked on, and eventually one prevailed. The first was to mount the throttles, fuel rails, and linkages upside down with tons of hood clearance, facing the stacks downwards. This gave us the most room for the giant BMW OEM throttle position sensor on the driver's side and injector serviceability on the top. However, after days of staring at both options, I realized that the beauty of the brass throttle blades just had to be on display. So, the challenge of cramming the throttle position sensor, fuel supply, and airbox began. With all of the parts being printed out of PETG instead of PLA, it gave us a little bit more flex and wiggle room on the way into the car, just in case anything didn't fit perfectly. The first prototypes were printed without any O-ring grooves or complex threads, and after each update, more detail was added into the model and then subsequently test fit on the car. Here it is, after two weeks, this is the fully 3D printed mock-up of Jacob's new intake manifold for the Volvo. We're just gonna use this to check for fitment of the hood, radiator hoses, are the bolts accessible, does it fit with everything on the car as it is, just to get a general idea of how things in the engine bay work out. So, with that said, I'm gonna bring this to FedEx. I think they close in about 30 minutes, uh, and hopefully Jacob knows which way this thing goes on. Is that it right there? Sure enough, that's fragile, all right. Hey, oh, fragile box here. Oh! Can I fit? Can I fit?
Hidalgo, Nate, Roselli, ITBs are here. They're here. ITBs. All right. So Alex said these are really fragile. Looks like it's fragile. Let's just hope it was treated like it's fragile. This is just a prototype. 3D printed out of plastic, which is why it's fragile. Oh. Wow, this blade really is dull. This blade's as dull as a fish. Alex gave us all these instructions on how to install this, and he left out the most important part. How to get it out of the box. Oh, I'm starting to see something here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. All right, we gotta be really careful. And yes, Alex, I know which way this goes on. All right. So, ITG for the ITBs. All right, so we got everything unboxed. Alex sent us a laundry list of instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and bolt this on the car. We'll have to be pretty careful that it's plastic, but um, hopefully everything fits and bolts up just how we want it to. Two bolts in here where the two holes are slotted on the manifold. So theoretically, I should be able to slide those on the bolts and then grab a top bolt and just start it by hand. And then we'll carefully snug it down. And by snug, I don't, I don't even mean snug. I just mean like, I don't know what I mean. Gentle. We have to be gentle. It's snug. I mean, it looks, it looks crazy. I mean, now I can finally pop my hood and show something. All right, so let's get the filter on. Yep, look at that. Good, cool. Okay, so the filter fits. No clearance issues here. All right, let's close the hood. Let's go over Alex's list and make sure we're not forgetting anything, but it looks like, it looks like everything fits fine. I wish we could fire the thing up right now. We got some work to do, but this is actually gonna work. With the prototype test fit and a list of things for Alex to revise, the ball was back in his court to modify and design round two of the ITBs. The Volvo throttle spring actuates the BMW throttles very nicely. Soon after, with fresh prints, a ton more bubble wrap, and some important additions such as the new performance fuel rail and factory BMW S85 injectors, as well as some adjustments to the velocity stacks and filter plate, it was time to install the new version. But not before first being confused by the new filter plate. I see, I see what's happened here. <laughs> this is the old, wait, I am confused. <laughs> We have two plates. We'll swap a Rooney. This is fiddly, huh? Pressed in, that was scary. What was that noise? Oh, and now we have to clock them. Jeez. Oh, this is a mess, Mark. Please, I hope Alex doesn't see this. This is a disaster. I think he might. It's a disaster. What am I even doing? Oh, wait, 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 wait. So this has to go through both? That has to be there. This is gonna be hard. So that has to go, oh man, I don't know. This is crazy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I probably should have watched his little instructional video on how to assemble these. You sent a video? I think so. Yeah, it's the fuel rail. So I need to move some of this stuff out of the way. I mean, there's like no room to get it in with the fuel rail there. I have to move all that stuff down. See that? Well, that helps. Try it again. Yeah, that was it. That was it, Mark. Damn, that is close to the fan. As you can see, if I go ahead and turn that, 
it opens the throttles and works as it should. So it's gonna be a nice, nice firm gas pedal, which I like actually, so. Version two went in seamlessly, and I could feel that we were getting really close with only a few things left to tweak, such as clearance between the fuel rail and the fan, as well as the radiator hose interfering with one of the velocity stacks. With those small issues addressed, Alex can finally send the ITBs into production. While Alex was busy finalizing the design of the ITBs, Nate and I addressed the 850's original fuel lines. The first step was to measure the length we needed for the feed and return, as well as calculate the angles we needed to mate up to the adjustable fuel pressure regulator and fuel rail. With those measurements, we ordered up all new motorsports grade stainless braided Teflon lines with AN fittings and ran the new lines from the fuel filter up to the adjustable fuel pressure regulator and fuel rail, and finally return back to the fuel tank. These lines will greatly improve the reliability and serviceability of the 850 in the future. With the new Motorsports fuel lines installed, we needed one last thing before the final ITB installation, and that was some engine bay cleanup. For that, Pat reorganized, rerouted, and loomed some of the rat's nest of wires we had from our initial electrical work. Finally, we can open the finished ITB pieces that Alex sent us. This is the real thing, the finished product. Let's look at some metal, let's do it. All right, I'll start with the big box. Oh. Now, Alex mentioned that there was something special that he made. Wow. There you go, that's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. This is the air box. Look. Here's the prototype part right here. Prototype manifolds. And then we have the real deal right there. Same with the manifolds. Obviously here's the prototype versus the real. It's really the same, same everything. With the final design in our hands, we pieced together the 850's custom individual throttle body setup. From the manifold and gaskets to the fuel injectors and fuel rail, we got it bolted up to the engine for the very last time. Surrounded by a crowd of curious and impatient co-workers, we got the 850 ready to fire up for the first time. Listen. Everybody just needs to relax, okay? Start at the... Oh. We've all waited like Listen, nine years for this. You're hesitating. What do you mean? Wait, 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 okay. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could fire it up. Oh, let's freaking go. Dude, it runs. It's got a good throttle response. Let's freaking go. It runs. It actually runs. Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm just, it's just, you know, it's stressful. And the fuel fumes are probably getting to me. I don't know. But it works. After replacing the faulty fuel pressure regulator, filling the engine with coolant, installing the velocity stacks and buttoning up the engine bay, Pat and I went for a quick ride around the block to make sure it was ready for the dyno.
We're tuning a Volvo today, which is an awesome, reliable, safe car. It's safe, we have to remind you. With an awesome engine set up with ITBs, I think it's gonna be the most kick-ass sound we're gonna hear for sure. I think it's a pretty good setup. We'll see how far we can go with it. And hopefully it makes way more horsepower than the initial setup, which didn't have ITBs. I'm expecting maybe 25 more with way more torque. Hopefully the cam is gonna be the right configuration for what we have for the ITBs. I think we're gonna run out of air before we run out of anything else. With the 850 strapped down and Kareem behind the laptop, we began the slow process of dialing in the fuel, ignition, and VVT maps. A lot of adjustments needed to be made for the ITBs, especially when tuning Alpha N. Alpha N solely relies on throttle position and RPM, rather than a map sensor or mass airflow meter measuring airflow. Uh, you know what, let's try with ignition right away. So wide open throttle, I'm going to 22. Let's try 25. With the ITBs pulling in much more air, we needed to add a lot more fuel to the original tune. And with more ignition timing, the 850 screamed to 175 wheel horsepower and 165 foot-pounds of torque. That's a 25% increase in power from the 140 wheel horsepower our original engine dynoed here years ago. And a ton more power and torque under the curve. You just beat it by 10 wheels. Last 10 wheels. Really? So we adjusted the fuel table, we adjusted the timing table and a VVT table. We got a lot of uh, power under the curve, we got a lot of torque. It's actually very comfortable. The ITBs are so efficient that between 70% and 100% we have the same result for power and torque. So the ITBs are actually a little bit too big for the cameras we have or the, what the engine can breathe. So it leaves room for evolution. We're going to do a final pull now and call it a day, guys. Thank you very much. The stressful time is over. Krim fine-tuned this thing. The power curve is super smooth. We made 175 at the wheels, which is probably over 200 of the engine, which I'm pretty happy with. It's basically making like Close to what a stock turbo engine would make, but NA, it's time to throw the livery on this thing, the bumper, and get this thing looking proper. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, the next episode, this thing will actually look as good as it sounds.